welcome back to the second week on the course on stress management and in the second module on stress psychophysiology today we shall discuss the stress and the HPA axis. The HPA axis is primarily known as the hypothalamic pituitary and adrenal axis. So, we shall understand what is the HPA axis, what are the organs that it involves, we shall understand the role of the endocrine system and the interaction with the nervous system and how these induce stress within the individual. So, this brings back to our old slide of the various physiological systems that are involved in the stress response and we have seen that the nervous system, the endocrine system and the immune system, they, these are the three systems involved in stress. Now, today's in today's session we shall see how does the nervous system and the endocrine system function during a stressful situation. Now, what is the endocrine system? The endocrine system consists of a series of hormonal glands located throughout the body which regulate the metabolic functions that require endurance rather than speed. So, basically the endocrine system is due to long term stress or chronic stress several long term changes are brought about in the endocrine system. But the endocrine system is also related to the immediate response during a stressful situation. The, the endocrine system consists of four components primarily the glands, the hormones, the circulation of these hormones and the target organ. So, that is how the hormones affect or uh, reach the specific organs and how do they affect during a situation, stressful situation in this case. The major end glands that are involved with stress in the endocrine system are the pituitary gland or the master gland, the thyroid gland and the adrenal gland. The thyroid gland very frequently we come across people suffering from hypothyroidism due to stress. Now, hyperthyroid whenever there is a, a long term stress, stressful situation chronic stress that is that dysregulates the thyroid secretion within an individual and in this way it may affect the thyroid gland. The, but today we shall not talk too much about the thyroid gland, but focus ourselves more on the pituitary and adrenal gland because today's section in today's section we are discussing about the HPA axis. Now, when the stress response is initiated in the brain, the sense organ sends information to the amygdala from the reticular activating system. This part we have already covered in the previous section. The amygdala as we know interprets these images and sounds and see evokes the emotional response and sends a distress signal to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus communicates with the rest of the body. So, here is the hypothalamus and it communicates with the rest of the body. So, that the individual can respond immediately to the stressor. So, a little more in details we can actually see the amygdala here the pituitary gland which is located below and the hypothalamus. And here we can also see the several limbic structures of the hippocampus, the raphenuclei, these we have we the basal ganglia, these are primarily some of the limbic structures that are also seen here. Now, coming to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a small structure below the thalamus and above the brain stem. We have talked about the brain stem and its structures in the previous section. The brain stem structures are basically related to the physiological arousal of the system and is more involved with the survival of the system. Hypo stands for under and in the human brain 
the si size of the hypothalamus that lies under or below the thalamus is almost the size of an almond. The hypothalamus links the nervous system to the endocrine system via the pituitary gland and it controls the release of hormones from the pituitary gland. That is the pituitary gland is the hormone secreting gland just below the hypothalamus. So, you can see here that the pituitary gland lies just below this is the hypothalamus and it just lies below the hypothalamus. It is such a small structure, but it regulates almost most of the hormone secretions within the body and thus it is known as the master gland. The hypothalamus is like a command center. It communicates with the rest of the body through the autonomic nervous system and in this case the sympathetic nervous system. So, now coming to the pituitary gland. So, the pituitary gland here it is just below the hypothalamus is a pea sized structure. It is very small and is located below the hypothalamus. During stress it, it actually controls the activity of the body's other hormone glands. We have discussed this and during stress it releases a hormone known as the adrenocorticotrophic hormone which stimulates the adrenal stress hormone called cortisol. Now, coming to the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland is located far away from the brain. So, that is its position it is structured on the top of each kidney. So, each individual has two adrenal glands and it is divided into two parts that is the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla. The both these parts of the adrenal gland secretes different kinds of hormones. The adrenal cortex secretes mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and gonadocorticoids. Gonadocorticoids are related to the growth and in this case our more important uh, hormone that is related to stress is the uh, glucocorticoids. The adrenal medulla secretes two primary hormones known as the epinephrine and the norepinephrine, which we discussed earlier is also known as adrenaline and noradrenaline as it is secreted from the adrenal gland. Now, coming to the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. This axis is the best known for its role in the mediation of stress within the body. The HPA axis or the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis includes a group of hormones secreting glands, hormone secreting glands from the nervous and endocrine system. This we have just seen and this consists of the as the name suggests the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland and the adrenal glands. So, what happens during a stressful situation? When a stressful event is experienced, the hypothalamus releases a hormone called the corticotrophin hormone or the CRH. The CRH signals the pituitary gland to secrete the ACTH or the adrenocorticotropic hormone into the blood stream. Now, when ACTH travels down to the adrenal glands where it, it prompts the release of glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex. So, this is one of the three hormones the glucocorticoids is one of the three hormones that is secreted by the adrenal cortex. And one of these glucocorticoids is cortisol which plays a very important role in stress response. So, what happens how is cortisol related to stress? When the cortisol level is increased epinephrine and norepinephrine these two hormones are secreted from the adrenal medulla. So, if we just revise this once more, so it starts with the hypothalamus getting a triggering response to release the corticotrophin hormone. The corticotrophin hormone goes to the pituitary gland and releases the ACTH or the adrenocorticotropic hormone into the bloodstream and the ACTH travels from the pituitary gland is released into the bloodstream and travels to the adrenal glands and triggers the glucocorticoids 
and one of the glucocorticoids is cortisol, which again stirs up the adrenal medulla to release the epinephrine and the norepinephrine. Now, the epinephrine and the norepinephrine are primarily related to the sympathetic activation system and these are released during a stressful situation. So, you can see the adrenal cortex and this, these are the two adrenal glands situated just on top of the kidneys and so here the HPA uh, hypothalamus uh, secretes the CRH, then the ACTH is secreted which travels over here and here adrenal cortex secretes the cortisol and here from here epinephrine and norepinephrine is secreted. Thereafter, this epinephrine circulates throughout the body and brings on a number of physiological changes. So, what are the physiological changes? If you just go through them, you will realize that we have been talking about these changes in the fight or flight response since the first week. So, the heart beats faster than normal. So, there is a pounding of the heart, pushing blood to the muscles, hearts and other vital organs. The pulse rate and the blood pressure goes up. The person undergoing these changes also starts to breathe more rapidly and small airways in the lungs open wide. The, so, these areoles in the lungs they open wide to let more oxygenated oxygen come into with each breath and with extra oxygen in the blood this is oxygenated blood is sent to the brain and it, that increases alertness. So, thus the seeing, the hearing and other sense organs become more sharper. So, this if you remember when we were talking about the, when we were seeing that video about Luke Eikens uh, jumping uh, during uh, from the, from 25,000 feet high above, we saw that we were talking about how the sympathetic activation system or during a stress situation the alertness increases. Now, you can understand why the alertness increases, but again as we studied then that if this continues for a long time then gradually the muscles will get exhausted and so the sympathetic system has to give way to the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, coming back to the HPA axis, the release of we saw that the uh, adrenal, um, the glucocorticoids, one of the glucocorticoids is cortisol that is released and the release of cortisol causes a number of changes that help the body to deal with stress. So, what happens? Cortisol also helps mobilize energy like glucose, so that the body has more energy to cope with prolonged stress. So, in fact, it also helps to break down the fat metabolism within the body. In general, when the threat passes, the cortisol level falls. So, expected that when I see a train coming, coming my way while I am standing on the railway track, then this immediate threat response triggers the HPA axis into action. But as soon as I step away from the railway track, the threat passes and the cortisol level falls. So, when the cortisol level falls, the parasympathetic nervous system or the brake in this case dampens the stress response. So, the parasympathetic nervous system is activated and we know that some of the uh, hormones secreted by the parasympathetic nervous system help maintain the body's homeostasis and the relaxation response. Now, what happens when the cortisol level in the blood gets high? Then it is sensed by the receptors in the brain like hypothalamus which leads to the shutting down of the stress response and through the negative feedback mechanism. Earlier I was talking about the human body not being able to be in uh, stress for a long time. Say if the individual remains, if the heart uh, keeps pounding for a long time and if the epinephrine is released 
so much that the brain is that the body is activated the all the sense or stress organs that are related are activated for a long time then the exhaustion will set in so to maintain the body homeostasis the hypothalamus again shuts down the stress response through a feedback mechanism that works like a loop and the cortisol level is stopped. So, the cortisol uh, secretion is stopped. So, here is the increase in cortisol level will send a negative feedback to the hypothalamus and also to the pituitary to stop the ACTH and the cortisol secretion. Do not you find this interesting that so many things are happening we spoke about the HPA axis and how CRH leads to ACTH and then uh, to the glucocorticoids and the neurotransmitters of epinephrine and norepinephrine. Then how do we respond so quickly? So, this brings us to the efficiency of the sympathetic activation system. All these changes happen so quickly that most of the times we are not aware of it. And the amygdala and the hypothalamus work in conjunction that even before the visual centers have had a chance to understand what is happening, the body has responded. So, that is why before we actually realize how we are responding to a stressful situation, the body has responded say like jumping off the road back to the curb when a speeding car crosses by. Now, what happens when we are overstressed? Now, many people are unable to find a way to put the brakes on stress. So, chronic low level stress keeps the HPA axis activated. So, if there is we spoke earlier about chronic stress being very unhealthy for an individual. So, what actually happens is that after a while with the presence of chronic stress, the body is affected that by the stress and it contributes to health problems associated with chronic stress. So, it is like a motor that is idling away for too long. So, it is on the start and it is idling away for too long. Now, this what we have studied so far is the different structures are the different structures that are related to the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and we have seen how the HPA axis works during stress. We know that when there is a dysregulation of this whole system, we often have stress related disorders. One of them being uh, the panic disorder or the several other disorders like PTSD. So, th if we understand this is very important that why we study the stress physiology, because when we understand how the HPA axis works and how the brain is related to the stress formation, then we will also be able to use the stress management techniques effectively and also ourselves implement new techniques. So, maybe we can try some do it yourself DIY techniques uh, ourselves to implement to reduce stress in our daily lives. In the next session, we shall talk about stress and illness and the effect of stress on the immune system. Thank you.